Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is uh, our uh, final lecture. This is lecture number 14 from the grammar book. So today we are going to bring this uh, course into a close by basically discussing the last uh, uh, lecture. This lecture again as I said from the uh, grammar uh, book. So we are going to deal with chapter 7 where we talk about count and non-count nouns. This is on page 181. We are going to discuss those topics today. So we are going to deal with what is a count noun and what is the non-count noun. Then we are going to look at some common non-count nouns. Then we will deal with some exercise that uh, through which we can tell whether this noun is uh, uh, basically count or non-count noun. Then we will look at the difference between an and a. And we will also finally look at the difference between many and much. At the end of this lecture, we are going to have a sample exam question that is uh, showing you how the exam, the final exam can be uh, can be like. So basically, let's uh, sh see chapter number seven in the book <coughs> where we need to deal with uh, count and non-count nouns. As a simple idea of what is a count noun, the count noun is a noun that can be singular or plural. So if, if the noun can come in the singular and it is also possible to come in the plural, we call it uh, so we call it a, a count noun, excuse me. Now if you look at this example, a book. <clears throat> the word book can be singular and can be plural as well. We can say a book, one book, but this singular noun can also come in the plural. We can say two books, some books, a lot of books. So if the noun can be singular and can be plural, it means it is a count noun. Now, what is a non-count noun? What's a, if we said that the count noun is one noun that can be singular and plural? Now, what is a non-count noun? It is a noun that does not use a and does not use one, which means we cannot have a singular form of this noun. And it does not have a plural form. So it does not have a plural form with s. How? What does that mean? If you look at the word male, the word male in English is a singular noun. And we cannot use it with a or one. There is no plural form for this word. In other words, we cannot say some males. We cannot add this s at the end because this is a non-count noun. اسم غير قابل للعد. اسماء لا تقبل العد. لا يمكن أن يكون لدي one male, two males. We have only one form for this word, which is the form male. We say a lot of male, but not a lot of males. So we cannot use an S at the end. We cannot use a at the beginning. Okay, this is a list of some of the common, most common nouns that, most common nouns that are uh, non-count, that cannot be counted. Advice, nasa'ah, furniture, athath, help, Musa'ada, homework. You cannot make a plural of those nouns. Information, jewelry, luck, mail, money, music, traffic, vocabulary, weather, and work. It is not possible to use S with those nouns. You cannot say advices. You cannot say furnitures. This is not possible. Why? Because these are non-count nouns. You cannot count them. There's another list, bread, khubz, coffee, qahwa, fruit, milk, rice, soap, soap, tea, cheese, food, meat, pepper, salt, and sugar, and water. Those nouns 
are non count. There is no way you can use S with those nouns. They cannot come in the plural, they do not have a plural form. You cannot say one coffee or you cannot say a coffee because this is a noun that you cannot make plural. It is a non count noun. Now here is an exercise, in, uh, an exercise uh, in our book that is asking us to tell whether the underlined nouns, are they count or non-count? Can we make plural form with them or we cannot? If we can add an S to the end, we say this is a count noun. If we cannot add an S, we say this is a non-count noun. Let's look at the first sentence. He sits on a chair. So we can say a chair, which means this is singular. So if we can have singular, it means we can also have plural. He sits on a chair. We have many chairs. So this is a count noun. We can have chair, one chair, two chairs, three chairs, and so on and so forth. Furniture. The word furniture is a non-count noun. In English, again, she has a coin, one coin. She has coins, so this is a count noun. So we can count this noun. What about she has some money? We cannot say she has some monies, so we cannot have an S here. It's a non-count noun, so clearly money is a non-count noun. And again for the word traffic, sorry, traffic is also <coughs> a non-count noun. There are a lot of cars. One car, two cars, three cars. So clearly the word car is a count noun. What about I know a fact, one fact? We can have two facts, three facts. So this is a noun that is count noun. I have some information. We cannot say informations. So this is a non-count noun. You cannot count it. You cannot have basically a plural form of information. The teacher gives us homework. We cannot say homeworks because the, ho the word homework is a non-count noun. You cannot use it with the plural. So it's a non-count noun. While the word assignment is count. I have an assignment. I have two assignments. So the word assignment, as you can see in this example, we have an assignment it means it is a count noun. I like music. We cannot even in Arabic say uh, plural for the word music. Uh, we cannot say musiqa or musiqat. It is not really possible. So music is a non-count noun in English. Would you like some coffee? Coffee is a non-count noun. We cannot say some coffees because this is a non-count noun that cannot come in the plural. Our school has a library. One library, two libraries, so it's a count noun. We are learning a new vocabulary. One vocabulary? No, vocabulary. It's a non-count noun. You cannot say vocabularies. It's a non-count noun. I need advice. One advice? No, not possible. I need some advice, not some advices. It is not possible to be in the plural. So I need some advice. Advice is a non-count noun. Tom has a good job, a job, two jobs, three jobs. So the word job is a count noun. While he likes his work. Work is a non-count noun in this context, of course. So he likes his work. So work, uh, when it comes in the meaning of amal, so it ha does not have the meaning of, it is not basically countable. It's a, a non-count noun. Maria wears a lot of bracelets. Tartadi Maria al min al asawr So bracelets is a clearly a noun that can be in the plural. So clearly it's a count noun. Okay. Now, one point about using an and a. It's clear that we use a and an. Both of them are used when the noun is a singular noun. We cannot use them with the plural. Now, if you look at this example, dog is an animal. 
the word dog is a clearly singular, one dog. So we say, a dog is an animal. Now if you look at the word an here, we have the word animal, one animal. So this is a singular and this is also a singular. So we use a and we use an when we have singular nouns. But why did we use a here and an here? It is because of the first letter of the word. If it is a consonant, use a. If it is a vowel, use an. Let's look at another example. So uh, here we have Sally ate orange. Sally ate orange. Look at the word orange. It is one orange. So there is no S at the end. And the word here starts with a vowel, O. Now we cannot say Sally ate a orange, but we say Sally ate an orange. Why? Because the word orange starts with a vowel. Sally ate an orange. Now look at this example. Uh, now if you look at those words, the, word, the first word is apartment. So it starts with a vowel. So we have to use an apartment. So we use an when the word starts with a vowel and it is singular. It has to be singular, not a plural. So use an in the front of words that begin with the vowels A, E, I, O. But they have to be, as I said, singular words. Elephant, elephant, this is a vowel, so we have to say an elephant. Idea, an idea, orange, an orange. So only when the noun starts with a vowel, we use an rather than I worked in an office. Again, vowel, you use an. Now, another point is that an can also be used in front of an adjective beginning with a vowel and describing a singular noun. If you look at this sentence, Mr. Lee is an old man. Mr. Lee is an old man. So we have the word old, which is an adjective, followed by a singular word, which is the word man. Mr. Lee, because here we have a vowel, we can use an. We cannot say Mr. Lee is a old man because we have an adjective that starts with a vowel. Nadia is intelligent person, an intelligent person because we have a vowel here, uh, which is the vowel I. Now, we can also use, uh, we know the difference between uh, an and a. We use an if the word begins with the vowel u, which has a vowel sound. And we use a if a word begins with u, but sometimes this u does not have a vowel sound, but it has a u sound. This is, let's look at the example. What does that mean? Sometimes the, 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 the vowel u, when you write it like this, it can be pronounced differently. If it is like U sound, the vowel, you use an. But sometimes you use this vowel, but you do not pronounce it as a vowel, but you pronounce it as a consonant. In this case, you cannot use an, but you have to use a. Let's look at the example. An uncle. A, a, uncle. So we have a vowel here. That's why we used an. An ugly. A, ugly, ugly. So this is a vowel again. An umbrella, an umbrella. Now look at this word, a university, university. So we use the vowel U, but the pronunciation is not uh, like the word uncle, not like the word ugly, it's not a, uh, but it is a U sound as you can basically hear. A university, we cannot say an university. So if you see this little star in the front of the sentence, it means that this is wrong. This is not acceptable. An usual event, no. This is not a vowel sound. It is you. But here, a usual event. You, you, usual event. A useful book. An useful book, not acceptable. An usual event, not acceptable. 
So basically, the sound U, if it is pronounced as a vowel, like in a word ugly, a, uh, like in a word umbrella, a, uh, umbrella, a, uh, uncle, it is a vowel, and we use the article an, but not the article a. Uh. I have an uncle. He works at a university. So look, here there is you, there is you. But in this word, it is pronounced as a, uh, where it is a vowel. But here it is pronounced as you, the word that you find uh, in the word you, for example. Where you have a you sound rather than the vowel a. Uh. So here you use a, uh, and here you use and how can you differentiate? It is by knowing the words that uh, has the sound U and knowing the word that starts that has the sound A, uh, just like uncle. Let's look at the example. Sally had an untidy, an, an uh, uh, untidy room. So here we have the vowel having the sound A, uh, which is a vowel. While in this sentence, I have a you, you, useful idea. So we did not say I have an useful idea. I have a useful idea. So in the first case, the vowel here has the sound ah, 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 which is a vowel sound. While here, it does not have an ah sound. It has a u sound. So we cannot use an here. We cannot use an here. We use ah. Okay. Let's look at uh, the other part of the book. Do not use a or an when the noun is in the plural. So we said from the very beginning that a and an are used when the noun is singular. If the noun is a plural, you cannot use any of those articles. Look at this, uh, this exercise. Choose the correct sentence. Rabbits are animals. So look, this is a noun that is in the plural because we have s, animals. You do not use any article. Rabbits are animals. This sentence is wrong. Rabbits are an animal. This is not acceptable because animals here is in the plural. So we use an or a only when the noun is singular. So this sentence is wrong. Rabbits are an animal. This sentence is wrong because you say rabbit, which is one rabbit, then you use are. So the sentence is not acceptable. Rabbits, which is a plural, should say rabbits are a animals without a. Are. Just like this sentence. Rabbits are animals. So we use a or an only when we have a singular noun, but not a plural noun. Similarly, choose the correct sentence. This man is an engineer. Look, this is a plural, so you cannot use an here. These men are an engineer. How can that? We have a group of men. These men are, then we have one singular uh, reference. So this sentence is wrong because these men are, should be engineers. This man are an engineer, so we use this man which is singular, then we use are. No, this is wrong. This man is an engineer. These men are engineers. So as we said here, do not use a or an when the noun is in the plural. Look, engineers. So we have a plural noun here. In this case, you do not use anything in here. You don't say, these men are a uh, engineers, these men are an engineers, because we have a plural noun. So when it is a plural, don't use any of those. Let's look at the difference between many and much. We use many with countable nouns, with nouns that can be counted, or count nouns. While much is used with nouns that are non-count. So many is used with plural count nouns, while much is used with plural non-count nouns. I don't get many letters. Because we can have one letter, two letters, three letters, 
This is a count noun. It is in the plural, and it is count noun. So we can use many. Tom has many problems. Tom has many problems. So we have the word problem. We can say one problem, two problems, three problems. So this is a count noun. So many here is used to refer to, to when, it, when we have a plural count noun. What about much? <coughs> if you look, the word male is a non-count noun. So we say, I don't get much mail. So we cannot use many here because the word male is a non-count noun. So with non-count nouns, use much. I don't have much money. We cannot say one money, two monies. This is not possible. So with non-count nouns, use much. You don't use many. I don't have much money. <clears throat> now, this is the end of this uh, lecture. This is just a summary of what we have, uh, what we are going to have in the final exam. The final exam, there will be general question about a grammar. So whatever we have covered in the grammar lectures, there will be questions from what we have uh, covered. So questions about verb to be, questions about have and has, questions about this, that, these, uh, those, questions about a, uh, an, and also questions about many and much, questions about count nouns, and so on and so forth. There will be a passage or an article that we did not study, not from the lectures. So there is a passage that you will have in the exam, very simple passage, that is out from, it is not, not from the book, it is outside the book. It is not basically something that we study uh, in the lectures. The third uh, part in the exam, you will have a passage or an article that we have studied from the passages or the articles that we have studied during the course. So one from the course and one outside the course. So grammar questions, uh, article or passage from outside the book, and an, uh, another article from inside the books. An article that we have studied and we have talked about it is meaning, different uh, uh, the, the verbs, and basically uh, opposite, and we have talked about derivation and so on and so forth. So before we end this uh, close, this, before we uh, end this uh, course, uh, this is uh, some uh, sample exam question. هذا مثال على الامتحان الأخير. هذه ليست أسئلة الامتحان. This is just a sample. هذا ما يعني إنه هذه كل الاحتمالات للأسئلة. ولكن هذه أكثر الحالات اللي ممكن أن تأتي في الامتحان أو يأتي على غرارها أو يعني نفس طريقة السؤال بنفس مشابه لهذه الصيغة. ولكن هذه ليست الأسئلة التي ستجدونها في الامتحان وإنما على مثال على غرارها مشان لا مشان تتوقع طريقة الأسئلة أو نمط الاختبار. هذه الأسئلة أيضا محلولة. ف... راح تلاحظوا في حوالي خمسين سؤال هنا وأسئلة القواعد موجودة أمامكم بهذا الشكل مع حلولها أيضا يوجد هنا مقطع بسيط عن كندا وتطبيقات على هذا المقطع معاني كلمات عكوس مترادفات اشتقاقات وهكذا يوجد اشتقاقات أيضا في آخر الأمثلة فهذه كل كل سؤال و طريقة كل معظم حالات الأسئلة والخيارات اللي اللي مرت معنا في الكتاب فرح نقرأ بعض الأسئلة هنا ربما Okay, let's go to the first one Choose the sentence that expresses a habitual activity قلنا الحاضر البسيط يعبر عن العادات والأمور المتكررة Sally goes to the movies every weekend So something that repeats happens every weekend Sally drank past. Sally will watch future. Sally had past in the past perfect. So, كل هذول الخيارات ولا واحد منها يعبر عن هابت ما عدا المثال الأول. The sun rises in the east. تشرق الشمس من الشرق. إذا هذه حقيقة تعبر عن حاضر البسيط. Roses ورود. Recesses different meaning. Raises different meaning. Then the verb rises. You عبر عن حاضر بسيط لشروق الشمس. Does the student? قلنا لما يكون عندي فعل مساعد في حالة السؤال يأتي الفعل في حالة المصدر. Does the student write? 
Customers do not have to pay the money now if they do not want to. أيضا عندي مثال محلول على استخدامات الحاضر وهكذا. إذا عندي أسئلة أيضا مأخوذة من المحاضرات إنه تقسيم الضمائر إلى first person, second person, and and so on and so forth. أيضا عندكم أسئلة عن الحاضر البسيط هنا عندما يكون الفعل ينتهي ب x إلى آخره. هذه بعض الأمثلة لمعظم الحالات اللي مرت معنا على أحرف الجر أمثلة عن كتابة الأرقام مثل ما مر معنا في دروس المقالات وهذا كيف نسأل عن العكوس The opposite of the word question is answer Choose the correct short answer for Is your father an engineer? Yes, he is Or she, yeah, no, he is not Okay, so you choose the uh, short answer So this is uh, very quickly, a list of questions that can help you uh, expect how the exam question is going to be like. Okay, this is a passage, a very short essay, where we have questions about this essay, questions related to the meaning of the word, questions uh, related to the derivation, questions related to the words, شرح معاني الكلمات, وهكذا. Okay, this is how we ask about derivation. The noun from the word inform is information. The noun from the word standardize, standardization. Okay, so this is the end of this course, and this is the end of our uh, final lecture, lecture number 14. Uh, if you have any question, do contact me the way uh, we have discussed, either through the email or uh, through the live session. And I uh, wish good luck for everybody, and uh, I hope everybody passes the, ex the, the final exam. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.